Wild Jobs Namibia with Rudy and Marlies is proudly sponsored by Vintuk Lager. Namibia, land of the brave. Brave men and women who dedicate their lives to protecting a country of harsh terrain, ancient cultures and vulnerable wildlife. Namibian conservationists Dr. Rudy and Marlies van Vieden are on a mission to travel the length and breadth of Namibia to meet these intrepid individuals and to witness the incredible work they undertake on a daily basis. These are the unsung heroes of Namibian conservation and these are their wild jobs. Namibia's rich wildlife heritage attracts thousands of tourists to the country each year. But unfortunately, it also attracts a very different kind of person. People who visit the country not to enjoy the rich diversity of fauna and flora, but to exploit it. People who are in the illegal trade of animal specimens and poachers. One of the species hardest hit is the rhino under severe pressure from poaching. Rhino poaching is probably the single most important threat to the survival of the species. And today we have the rare opportunity to go and look behind the scenes at what the government does to stop rhino poaching. We always hoped and prayed that it won't happen in our country, but rhino poaching is happening. It's everybody's responsibility, me, the two million people in our country, the government, to look after this species. In one such effort, the Namibian government decided to translocate rhinos from one area to a safer area. Such an operation requires a lot of planning. You are the spotter, so you go up and you can notify the chopper, so you work in close uh, collaboration with the chopper. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we communicate via radio. Yeah. Normally I go to 5,000 feet, 4,500 feet, and then uh, I communicate, I, I, I locate the animals, yeah. I, I'm spotting the animals and then if this is the right animal we are looking for then I call in the helicopter but then this aircraft is also equipped with telemetry equipment yeah. and then we search so it's, uh, rather than to search unnecessarily just to fly around. So we locate the aircraft via radio. radio so there's colors, a lot yeah. of similarities between yeah. what Matthew does and what I do with cheetahs. You've got the antennas, we put the antennas mm. up. I look for cheetahs from the air and you look for rhinos. Yeah. That's, yeah. There's a lot of things that we yeah. do together. Behind me, you can see the spotter plane coming up and uh, for the takeoff. The spotter plane goes up, looks for the rhinos. Once they find the rhinos, they GP GPS point them and talk to the, to the chopper. And then the chopper goes straight in and gets them. With the aircraft airborne, the operation gets underway. To spot rhinos from the air is not easy. You really have to know what you're doing. The team is fortunate and it's not long before they find a black rhino and call the helicopter in. The ground crew has also been notified of the location and heads off. The darting goes without a glitch and the helicopter crew keeps an eye on the rhino, waiting for the sedative to take effect. As soon as the rhino goes down, the chopper lands. Everybody know they have to work as fast as possible. For Marlies, this is a special moment. This is such a humbling experience to stand next to such a huge animal, see him in this vulnerable state, and totally relying on people for survival of species. 
And maybe as, as a government is doing a un very unique job by looking after them, moving them around, and basically monitoring them and protecting them. And it makes me proud to be a Namibian, and I'm proud of our government to do that. This is also an ideal opportunity for the team to collect data from the animal, information that will go into a database to help us understand them better. To make sure the rhino doesn't overheat while under sedation in the hot sun, it is kept cool with water. Today, it is Sahio's job to do this. Gottfried Apollos from the Ministry of Environment and Tourism has done these kinds of operations many times before and has a lot of experience. Obviously we can't say where we are now, but the government's busy with rhino work. What, yeah. What's the idea of the work today? What are we going to do? Um, is to capture and, uh, and uh, translocate them to other safer areas. Okay. Yeah, that is the whole uh, initial idea of this operation. Okay. And so what do you, I mean, you, the animal is down now, what do you do? You do blood tests, you do measurements, all of those things, do you weigh them as well? We do dehorn, we do blood tests. If they are not established in the, the rhino database, we need to open a registry for each animal. Oh, okay. Captured, yeah. Okay. Put in chips, so we eventually know where this rhino is if we find it somewhere else okay. where these ones come from. To determine if the animal doesn't perhaps contain bullets from poaching attempts, a metal detector is used. One of the rhino's ears is tagged to make future identification easier. Wild Jobs Namibia with Rudy and Marlies is proudly sponsored by Vintuk Lager. Wild Jobs Namibia with Rudy and Marlies is proudly sponsored by Vintuk Lager. Rhinos are poached only for their horns. In an effort to discourage poachers from shooting this one, part of its horn is cut off. Police will take now charge of this piece of horn. And just looking at it, I mean, that's the, that's the most ridiculous thing in the world. How can people kill an animal for this? Madame Police. Absolutely fantastic. Yes. It went like a well-oiled machine. Everything was organized. But can you organize these flies to leave us alone? <laughs> Unfortunately not. They're also part of the operation. They have their role to play. <laughs> and that is to irritate you. <laughs> and they're doing a great job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, they are part of nature. They keep are the holes closed. Yeah, keep, keep every hole closed. Yeah. Then you are sorted. <laughs> like that. Well, I think Namibia and the government has done a great job with rhino conservation in Africa, and I think Namibia is an icon in, in rhino conservation. Why would you say, has Namibia done so well with rhino conservation? Um, because everybody, it's not only the ministry that wants to 
conserve these people, these species. But uh, if the private entities are involved, and now the state security, the police are also involved, and uh, this is a collective uh, collaboration that uh, exists amongst us and them. And I think that is one of the attributes to the success of this. Uh, yeah, and, and I think also your the tourists visiting the Namibia. Yes, I mean, of that's the eyes and the ears, the people uh, on the ground. Yes, reported. Eh? Definitely. Sometimes we are not, because uh, we are mostly covering other areas, and uh, tourists visiting the our internal areas can be our extra eyes and ears, and uh, that type of information from them is also very useful for our operation. Well, we enjoyed it so much, Godfrey, that we <laughs> even want to take the flies with us. Thank you very much. It was a great, great experience for us. You can take a few of them and uh, just don't go and kill them. <laughs> yeah, you know. yeah, protected flies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> every species is protected. Yeah. Thank you very much. It was a very unique experience. Safely in the crate, the modern migration to a safer destination starts the sad reality of the plight of rhinos currently. I was really privileged today as a mum to share this wonderful work with rhinos, with my kids. To be able to show them how big these animals are. Two years ago, I had the opportunity to work with two baby rhinos, and I actually realized how soft and gentle these animals are. They make these tiny, tiny little noises like a little bird. And I, it just makes me more determined to give them a voice and to work harder to protect these animals. Namibia has always been an icon when it comes to rhino conservation. And today, we realized why. It's because our government and government officials work so hard behind the scenes to ensure the survival of the species. They are almost as elusive as the rhinos themselves. And today I just realized again that one needs to think about your legacy. And the poacher, the potential poacher, must also think about his or her legacy. The point is, as late as 2011, the IUCN declared certain subspecies of rhino as extinct. Final, there's nothing more after extinction. So what's the legacy that you will leave? Zahir, what do you think? Dad, it was the best day of my life and I know I learned more than I would have learned in school. You just want to get out of school. <laughs> Wild Jobs Namibia with Rudy and Marlies is proudly sponsored by Vintuk Lager. Wild Jobs Namibia with Rudy and Marlies is proudly sponsored by Vintuk Lager. The Itosha National Park in the north of Namibia spans an area of 22,270 square kilometers and is teeming with wildlife. Hundreds of species of mammals, birds and reptiles, including several threatened and endangered species, occur here. zebra species, the plain zebra and the Hartmann's mountain zebra also roam these plains. It is suspected that there might be some interbreeding between the two species and the Namibian government has launched a research project to determine whether this is in fact happening. Kenneth Ise from the Directorate Scientific Services is doing his doctorate here in Etosha and is in charge of the research project. Kenneth, how, how did you become involved in conservation? Did you just wake up one morning and thought to yourself, Kenneth, you need to be a conservationist? Rudy, it's a long story. I grew up at the farm. I spent most of my childhood days at the farm where we have to go and look for 
livestock in the bush. We have to go out and spend time playing in the bush. And at that young age, I developed love for nature. And, um, and then eventually, when I went to the university, I went to do my degree in geography and environmental studies. And I think that's where I feathered my interest in uh, nature conservation. Kenneth, uh, today we're going to call this on zebras. Um, and this is your PhD project. It's a ministerial project, but your PhD project. Why are we doing this project? What, what is the purpose of this? In this part where we are in Western Etosa, we find two species of zebra. Uh, we've got the Plain Zebra and Hartman's Mountain Zebra. Uh, this is the only place in the world, I believe, where you have the two species sharing the same habitat. Uh, we suspect that there is hybridization taking place between these two species. There was a student, a PhD student, that did her research work on Plain Zebra uh, in Namibia, in Etosa, and in her studies she found some evidence of uh, mountain zebra genes in the Hartman, uh, in the plain zebras. And there's also photographic evidence. We believe that maybe there is a problem in this western uh, Etosa where the two species coexist. So we started this project to understand first the range overlap, where these two species uh, overlap, what is the extent, what are the possible factors that brings these two species together. So the question is, is does it result in hybridization if the two species are sharing or coexisting or sharing the same space. And to understand if, if it is taking place and if it does take place, what is the extent? Is it just restricted to certain areas in Western Etosa or is it widespread maybe in, in the whole of the Western Etosa? It's time for action and the team heads off. Behind the wheel is Johannes Kappner, who knows the area well, and next to him is vet Karl-Heinz Moller, who will be doing the darting. Hartmann's mountain zebras are hardy animals and can survive in very harsh terrain. During wet seasons, they can go for up to two or three days without drinking fresh water. Occasionally, such as in times of drought though, they can end up in conflict situations with livestock farmers due to competition for food. <laughs> So the, the fact that she's biting her teeth like that and she's not trying to talk to Malise or it's not cold here in Itosha, it's because of the, the drugs. It causes her increased tonus in the muscles and she's actually just a little bit tense under anesthesia. It is relatively easy to distinguish the Hartmann's mountain zebra from the plain zebra. The black and white stripes form a triangle on the back of the mountain zebras, just above the tail. They also have only black and white stripes where the plain zebras have additional light brown stripes between the black stripes. With the mountain zebra collared, the team heads off in search of a plains zebra. You can only make uh, recommendations to influence management if you have scientific facts. You cannot use what you think, your own opinions, to try and influence decisions, uh, conservation decisions. It needs to be backed by scientific evidence. Yeah. As 
As in the case with the rhino, this is an ideal opportunity to collect data from the animals for research purposes. Once the collar has been fitted, an antidote is administered to wake the zebra up. I've learned a lot today, and all I can say is I think you're the zebra guru of Namibia, and you deserve your stripes. Thank you, Rudy, for that compliment. <laughs> I'm trying to, to better understand this species. I should not claim yet at this point in time that I'm the guru. In the next five years' time, I should be the one. Wild Jobs Namibia with Rudy and Marlies is proudly sponsored by Winterklager.